Okay, so to start with, we open up a new file. We went to File, New. I'm going to go ahead and close this right here. We went to File, New. And I talked about real quickly in terms of the different type of files that you can choose from. So you'll notice that on the preset, there's a letter type of file that you can choose in terms of if in your profile, again, there's all other presets if you choose print, it automatically goes to letter and then it chooses a width and size for you. And I also showed you how to change it from points to inches when you first start off. And then you can also change the size if you wanted to. I didn't show you guys this, but obviously you can type in the, the size here if you want it, let's say 11 by 11, right? And then we also talked about the color mode, which is very important if you're going to choose for printing purposes or if you're going to choose for the web. So if you'll notice on the profile, we talked about how in print, it's going to be normally, uh, the color mode is going to be CMYK cyan, magenta, yellow, black. If we choose web, then notice the size changes, but again, we, we don't have to go with the size that's already set on there, we can change it ourselves. And you'll notice the color mode, mode has changed from RGB, so from CMYK to RGB, which means red, green, blue. So the color spectrum are different between if you're going to uh, put it up on the web or if you're going to uh, print it. Okay. So I'll go back to the print. That's what we had chosen. Uh, I'm going to change this uh, from points to inches. I'll leave it at the default eight and a half by eleven, CMYK, and we talked about leaving it at 300 uh, PPI pixels per inch. As I said, start off high. You can always uh, go down. You know, you can always make it uh, smaller. Okay. So. We went to the one tool we started off with, with the rectangle tool. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. And basically, oh yeah, I showed you guys also in terms of viewing the rulers. So we, you can view the rulers to help you out. And I started off by drawing the rectangle. And then I, I'm going to change the, I changed the color before I went ahead and get started. I've changed the color to something else like yellow. And this is one place that we can change the color. In terms of the palettes, we can also go here to under silk swatches. Start off with yellow. Notice the color picker changes to yellow. So I'll go ahead and use the, the ruler to help me out. So we have our first rectangle. Then I'm going to move it down just a little bit now that I have the size that I want. Deselect this so I'm not constantly selecting the, the rectangle itself. Then what I did uh, is I drew another rectangle, or actually, no, actually I made a copy of this. I showed you, there's different ways to make copies. One way is, as I'm about to show you, you select it, do Command C, and then Command V, as in Victor. And so it makes a copy of this. Now I want to use, I want to make this as a, to a smaller rectangle, but I want to place it on top. Now if it's the same size, obviously it's going to just overlap it and not look any different. So I'm just going to resize it a little bit by grabbing on those handles, right? And then I'll move it into place. And I use I can use my arrow key, left or right arrow key, to move it around. Maybe resize it a little bit more. Again, by grabbing on that handle. So that's one way to resize it. Okay. So I got the beginnings of the pencil. Now I'm going to do the eraser. To the eraser, I'm going to use the rounded rectangle. So I'm going to click that. Now, as I begin, oh, and before I begin to draw so it's not the same color, I'm going to choose a different color here. So kind of an eraser color. Uh, we'll start off with this color. Now, this particular color that I just chose, um, it's a good start, but I want it to be a little lighter or something like that. But there's no choices in there for me to, to make it a little lighter or something. So what I'm going to do, now I'm going to go into the color picker by double clicking on here. And on my color picker, I have a better better hue of, of colors that I can choose on, on there. So now, maybe I'll choose a lighter color or darker color or something like that. Okay. 
All right, so now that I've changed my color, notice the color picker has changed, oh, wait, the colors has changed. Now this right here, this rectangle on top is considered the fill color. That's what changes the colors inside the objects. And this other hollowed out rectangle, which is black right now, changes the stroke. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing my eraser. And as I draw it, I can change the roundness of the rectangle by going up or down using my up and up or down arrow key and then I'll place it on there now you'll notice that it's on the top and if in you know, on top of the the pencil so what I want to want to do is move it towards the back all the way behind all the other two rectangles to do that you're going to go to object arrange sent to back. Okay, now the rectangle that rounded rectangle is towards the back. All right. So now, um, and by the way, if I wanted to get rid of the stroke on here, I can select the rectangle or the, this rounded rectangle, and down over here in my color picker area, I'm gonna I'm going to select the stroke. And in this case, just to show you, I can change the different to a different color. Notice now it's green. Uh, let me zoom in on here. And to zoom in, I'm going to use my spacebar command key, which changes it to my zoom tool, and I'm going to click and drag. And notice right here, I'm changing it to, say, red. Uh, let's change it to blue. And notice now it's blue. Also, just want to show you in terms of the size of the, I didn't show you this, but I can change the stroke on there, the stroke size by selecting it and going up to the option bar and then typing in a number if I want to up here or just selecting a number there. So for instance, seven or whatever, right? Now, as I said, I don't want, to, I don't want a stroke on here, so I'm going to select, make sure that my stroke fill is selected, and then I'm going to click the slash through it. That means that it won't have a color at all. And I could do, by the way, I could do the same thing with my um, with my fill. So if I don't, didn't want the, uh, for instance, let's let's say that I didn't want this particular rectangle to have a fill, I can select the fill. And, well, let's, let me do this this one over here. And notice there's no fill on there. It's just a stroke. Right. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to zoom back out. I can zoom back out by uh, hitting Command minus, or I can do Command zero, so it zooms out, so it fits into the window. All right. So now I'm going to use my tri uh, star tool to create the triangle. To do that, I'm going to click and drag. But then, as I'm clicking and dragging to create the triangle, I'm going to use the up and down arrow key. Notice when I go up, I have more points in the star. When I go down, I decrease the number of points in the star, and eventually I get a triangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that triangle there. I'm gonna resize it. By the way, I'm holding down the left mouse key as I'm dragging, and then the space bar to move it up into place. Okay. I'm going to zoom in again just to see a little bit better, get it placed on there, maybe resize it using my selection tool. I could use my size tool, scale tool, to resize it. I'm going to take off the stroke on here also, so I'm going to select the stroke colors there and hit none so there's no stroke to it. Select it one more time, move it up a little change it to a color brown oops got to select the uh, got to go back and select the fill so I'm selecting the fill changing it to a light brown there now I'm going to make I'm going to take this and, and make a copy of this but I'm going to scale it down to do that I use my scaling tool which is this tool right here the two rectangles one small one large with an arrow going through it so I'm going to select, double click on that to bring up the dialog box. 
So where it says uniform, I could use ununiform so I can change it horizontally and vertically, but here in this case, I'll just change it um, uniform. So I'm going to change it down to about 20%. Hit preview. So I get a preview copy of that, and that's gonna, I'm gonna make that the lead, right, of the pencil. And instead of uh, hitting OK, which, which would scale it down to that size, I'm going to click on Copy. And it makes a copy of that. And you'll notice it's, since it's the same color, it, it's going to kind of blend in if I deselect it. But I know it's there, so I notice when I put my cursor over it, it highlights it. So I can select it, go to the fill, and change that to black. And then I'll move it down. I'm going to use the shift down key, which moves it by 10 pixels. Then when I get about where I want to go, then I'm just going to use the down arrow key to just move it into place. Okay. So now I have my uh, pencil. I'm going to zoom out. Oh, yes, I forgot to uh, draw the, uh, the, the bands that go onto the pencil right here. So to do that, I'm going to use the um, rectangle tool. I'm going to zoom back up, up, up over here. And I'm going to start um, one of the rectangles, one of the bands. And it's usually green, so I'm just going to change it to green there. And I showed you how to make a copy of this before, or make a copy of anything, is select it, command C, and then command V as in Victor, to paste it. So, but in this case, I'm going to show you a shortcut using the selection tool. I'm going to click on my selection tool. I'm going to click on the rectangle itself. Hold on, I'm going to hold on the option bar, and I'm, and I'm going to click and drag. As I click and drag, it makes a copy of that object. So I'm going to click and drag and then move it up a little bit and so on okay now the other thing I showed you too like for instance um, say that this is they're off just by a little bit in terms of just placing things and you want to make sure you align them correctly what we could do is you can select what you want to align you know either vertically or horizontally just select each object by holding down the shift key. You can skip by selecting the object by holding down the shift key. So I'm going to select this one, hold on the shift key. I'm going to select the next one and then the next one. And then up on my option bar right here where it says align, I get this di uh, dialog box, which by the way, you can go to window and bring up that align box. And I want to make sure they're all aligned center horizontally. So I'm going to click on this icon right here and notice now they align center. And also I want to make sure that distribute correctly in terms of vertically, so I'm going to click on that. Notice just slightly moved it up, and there you go. Zoom back out. And then, oh, the other thing I showed you guys was the, um, just basically uh, taking a rectangle or making a uh, square. To make a square, you can hold on the shift key, click and drag, and you get a nice perfect square. Okay, so change it to black. I'm gonna rotate it. Move it over a little bit. Change it to my selection tool. Make a copy of that also. This time I'll change it to 50%. Copy, click OK. Did it make a copy? Ah, it made a, didn't make a copy. Hold on. So, I, uh, by the way, remember you can undo by doing Command Z. So I'm going to double click here again. And I must have copy. There we go. So now there's my copy. Uh, Actually, I want to make it 50%. Mr. Savile, excuse the interruption. There was a one hour delay on the train. So okay, no problem. Sorry. No problem. I'm just making a, a doing a review here anyway. So, okay. Um, all right, so now once I've selected it, I'm just going to make it white. And then I'm going to move both of these objects, and that 
So again, I'm going to select this one, hold on the shift key, I'm going to select the other one. And I'm going to go to object, arrange, send to back. Okay, so that's what we did. And I also showed you that since it's Illustrator, we can, I can select everything and I can resize it by holding on the shift key proportionally by going on, on the corner. And I can make this, if I wanted to, to a logo that would be part of a letterhead, for instance, or it could be a logo for a business card. Or, again, because we can resize it uh, and not worry about getting pixelated and so on, because it's a vector-shaped object, <clears throat> we can make it as large as a poster or, you know, as large as, you know, a letter type pa uh, paper and so on. Okay? So just keep that in mind in terms of working with Illustrator, that it is a vector-shaped program. Um, and we can, you know, we have the option of being able to resize things without... Uh, worrying about getting pixelated and so on.